Hi, in this video I'll be showing you how to clean and maintain the Dyson Micro 1.5 kilogram cordless vacuum cleaner. Now if you ever suffer with the Dyson, uh, with things like the pulsing or it loses suction, then some of the cleaning tips I will show you should be able to help resolve the problem. All I'd normally say just before we start is please give us a quick thumbs up on YouTube, just give us a quick subscribe. Uh, what I do is I talk about things like cordless vacuum cleaners, household appliances. I've covered quite a few cleaning videos on a lot of other Dyson products and to be fair they've gone down normally quite well. So just give us a quick subscribe then we'll make a start. So just to start off with I'm just going to show you how to clean the tools and accessories first. So I'll just pop the main unit to one side. Um, as far as the, the main pole or the lance or the wand as some people call it, there's not a huge amount you can do with this. Um, all I'd normally recommend, just on the outside, just get uh, say a, a microfiber cloth, uh, just make sure it's nice and clean going around the pole. Uh, as far as the inside, what you want to do is just make sure there are no blockages inside. Uh, this can be a, a cause of uh, loss of suction with the, the any of the Dyson vacuums, not just this model. So just have a look all the way down uh, if you need to then, uh, well have a look down both sides if you can't see all the way through then that's something that you might need to sort out. Um, just be wary, so you don't want to get any of the contacts wet at the end here. So don't put it in water or anything like that. Uh, but once you've done that, then just pop that to one side. So I suppose the first proper tool to look at is this one. This is the, the mini fluffy head. And what you'll notice is that there's a slot just on the side here. If you just lift that, then that just pulls out. And that's quite good. I must say I do like this design. Uh, Dyson are making things a bit easier now for us to help clean and maintain the vacuums. Now first of all just to notice that here it's more of a utility area that I'm doing this in so if I do get dirt and dust everywhere then don't worry too much about it. Uh, in some of my other videos people comment in why am I doing this first of all in my kitchen well that's not the case. So all I'd normally recommend doing with this is just taking that end part off so with this fluffy head, what I'd recommend doing is giving it a quick rinse under the tap. Uh, what this does is, first of all, it just gets rid of any, any dust or dirt that's around it. Um, also, hopefully, by doing that, it should, I suppose, lift the bristles again, because you can see they've, they've fallen quite flat. So I'll just give it a, a quick clean. So now I've done that, uh, let's just get the majority of the water off it. Uh, with this, so clearly I'm not going to be able to put it back together straight away, uh, but I'd normally recommend putting it to the side for, for several hours. Um, you'll, you'll see that there's another filter that I need to clean in a minute. So uh, with this, I'd recommend just putting it to the side for probably 24 hours actually. Now for the main part of the fluffy head tool, what I do is I normally recommend getting say a damp microfiber cloth, something like this, and uh, just wiping it around the head uh, what you don't want to do is do not get this part wet. Um, what you'll find is that some of the some of the parts, which especially if, if they've got electrical connections, then you might, uh, if you do wash them, then you could find that over time that it will damage them and then it won't be covered under the warranty that Dyson offer. Uh, to be fair, the Dyson guarantee is, is a two year guarantee, but that's really for faults or for anything go that goes wrong. So I just recommend giving that a, a quick wipe over. And then once you've done that, looking as new. So what I want to do is I'll, I'll try and put these things separate. So I won't put them all here because this area might get quite dirty. So I'll just put that to the side. And the same with this side part, just give it a, a quick wipe over with a, a damp microfiber cloth, which this is. And then we're ready to move on to the next tool. Now the next tool to clean is this one. This is the mini turbo brush or mini turbine brush, sometimes they call it. Now to clean this, all you'll need is a coin. Uh, sometimes you can use a screwdriver, uh, but it is recommended to use, if you do use a screwdriver, use a very large headed screwdriver, because uh, what you don't want to do is to damage the side of this. So if you just pop a coin in the side there, twist it, and then what you'll find is that that will just pop out and then that will give you the ability to remove the brush from the head. And I'll be, be completely honest that this one and one of the other tools I haven't used a huge amount. 
So what you'll find is there's not a huge amount of cleaning that I need to do. And similar with the brush, uh, I suppose just give it a, a quick wipe over. Just make sure that that brush is nice and clean. Uh, you, what you might find sometimes you might have hairs wrapped around it. So just take all the hairs off, uh, make sure that's nice and clean. And to put this back together, uh, all you need to do is just locate the brush back within the main unit. And uh, just get this. So you just locate that, that's it. Uh, get the coin, twist it, it's only a little bit, so you don't need to be too forceful on it. Again, you don't want to damage the head on this. Uh, I have done it before, and I have seen customers do it before, where they get a, a small screwdriver, they start to try and twist it, and it just mashes at the end, and it just makes it really difficult to uh, open and shut this. So again, I just recommend getting a coin for this. Uh, but basically that part is done now, so I'll put that to the side and then carry on with the next tool. Again, similar to the mini turbo brush. Uh, to be fair, this hasn't been used a huge amount. Uh, I have used it sometimes, uh, but all I'd normally recommend doing is, first of all, if you have got any hairs around the brush part, then I just recommend removing those first of all. Uh, and again, just getting a, a damp microfiber cloth, just give it a, a white round it, just make sure that the, the connection at the end is nice and free of any dirt or dust. Uh, what you'll find sometimes, you know, if you have owned this for a couple of years, then you could find that, especially at the end here, it could start to get a bit dusty. Uh, and sometimes if it's not uh, connecting properly to the main body of the vacuum over there, then it might not work as, as it should do. Uh, but as I say, to be fair, this isn't really dirty. So I think what I'll do is I'll put this to the side and I'll concentrate on the main unit. As you can see, this has been used quite a bit. Uh, there's quite a lot of dirt and dust in here. So really the first thing is to go and empty this. Uh, I'm not gonna do it on the on the worktop here. I'm just gonna go over to my bin and do it. Uh, as I say in some of my other videos, uh, it, I'd normally recommend trying to empty this outside. Uh, what you can find is the amount of dirt and dust that you get coming back up at you uh, is quite a bit. So I'm, I'm just gonna pause this, go and empty the bin and then come back to it. If you're not sure how to do it, uh, if you, well, if you own one of these, you should know how to do it. You've just got a little handle underneath that pushes forward and then the end will flap up and then all of the dirt and dust will come out. So I'll just go and get that done first of all. Now for this next bit, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick a couple of bits of paper down. Uh, just makes it a bit easier cleaning up afterwards. Um, I suppose most of the time I'd recommend putting some something like newspaper down. Uh, unfortunately, I've not got any newspaper to hand at the moment. So as you can see in here, uh, I've just emptied the bin and there is quite a, quite a blockage in there. Uh, that's something that can stop the, the vacuum in from sucking up uh, and that's often what causes the pulsing, uh, which is quite a common thing with quite a few Dyson cleaners. doesn't matter whether it's the, uh, say the older V6, uh, sometimes the V7, V8 do it as well. So just be aware that when you're doing this, the bits are falling off, so it can be quite a messy job. That's why I try and put things down to just to try and make life easier to clean up after yourself. So to take the bin off, uh, you've got a, a trigger or a lever under here. All you do is you twist that and then pull that and then the bin will come off. Uh, and then as far as the main unit, really what I want to do to start with, so I'll try and get all the, the dirty jobs done, is to get in here. You see there's quite a, quite a lot of rubbish in here at the moment. So bits will start to fall out. It might be a case that I might just need to go and get some, some tweezers or something or uh, a little screwdriver just to go and help take some of these bits out. Right, so in some of my previous videos, what I have done is I've actually taken this inner shroud out. Uh, what I have done um, is I have just taken this apart because to be fair, I hadn't done it before using a T8 Torx drive. Uh, there's only four screws on here. Uh, so clearly it's quite easy to do and to take this off if you really want to. So in the end I did end up using a screwdriver just to get all the dirt and rubbish out of here. Uh, now that I can see inside that that's, I'm not sure if you can see in there, but that's nice and clear. So there's no blockage at all in there. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because when I was using it then it did start to pulse. Um, to be fair it's quite annoying. Um, it's something that quite a few Dyson cleaners do, but normally just by cleaning it, maintaining it properly, then you don't need to get a service engineer out to it. Uh, especially you don't need to go and buy a new vacuum if that starts to happen. 
So what I want to do now is just get an old paintbrush, uh, just a, an old dry paintbrush, and just give this a, a brush round here. Uh, there's, there's not a huge amount we need to do on this part, so you'll just find that if you knock the end, then you'll find that there's quite a bit of dirt that still falls out, which which is quite annoying, really. You know, you, you're cleaning away, and as you can see, it's coming out from the inside. Uh, but that just means that it's less dirt that's within the vacuum itself. So I think now we're we're done there. That's it. So what I'll do is I'll get my damp microfiber cloth and just give it a, a wipe around here. Uh, the key here is to don't get any of this wet. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to put water around here at all. So you can either just get a, a slightly damp or even a dry mic microfiber cloth. This is quite a dry one now. Uh, the key to it is when you're doing this, these rubber seals here, just make sure they're nice and clean. Uh, what you can find is, again, if, if these are dirty, then when you put everything back together, if it doesn't seal properly, then you'll find that the suction and the performance isn't that great. Uh, but as far as the main body of the vacuum, uh, I just give it a just give it a white round. You want to make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, we have got the filter on the back here, so I'm just going to take that off. Let's just pop that main unit to one side because we're almost sorted with that. Now, as far as the filter itself, uh, this, as it shows, it's got a picture of a tap uh, or a faucet if you're in America. And what this will do is this is designed to be washed. So let's just give this a quick rinse. Now, just a tip, when you are washing it, just hold it down. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that any of the dirt and rubbish comes out of the end. You don't want to wash it like that, because what you can find is any of the dirt that you just washed out of it, then that could go down to the bottom, which is sort of defeating object of what we're doing. So just make sure you wash it that way. Uh, with any of these filters, and if you have followed me on YouTube for a while, then uh, especially some of my cleaning videos, I'm always an advocate, just leave the filter to dry for about 24 hours before you put anything back together and use the vacuum. The main reason is if you don't leave it, then what you can find is if, if we were to put it back now and use the vacuum, then it will damage the vacuum and that would not be covered under the warranty that comes with Dyson uh, or any manufacturer actually, it's not just Dyson. Uh, so this is really why I recommend buying a spare filter. Um, I have posted a link here if you did need a spare filter and the main reason for that, in theory what we could do is we could get the vacuum clean and then I could put this to one side for an hour for 24 hours um, and then with my other filter I could put that on the vacuum and then we could go and vacuum straight away but at the moment because I've only got one of these filters then I do need to let this dry properly so and just before we finish this part just make sure that the rubber seal around here is nice and clean uh, again what happens when you push this back onto the vacuum it creates a nice seal at the end and again, if that isn't clean, then that can have an effect on the performance of the vacuum as well. Uh, but really the next part I want to do is to clean the bin out. Uh, I've got quite a few bits coming out still. So let's just put this out of harm's way. I don't want that to get dirty again. So with the bin, then I just recommend getting a, just get your paintbrush again. And just give that a, a good wipe out. What you want to do is you want to try and just get get as much of the, the rubbish out as possible. Um, in some of my earlier videos, I suppose I'd recommend giving this a wash. And I suppose there's no harm in giving it a wash. There's no electrical connections in here. Uh, but really what, what I wanted to do was to try and do it as quickly as possible. So again, just get your, your microfiber cloth and give that a good wipe out inside. Uh, doesn't normally take too long to do this. Just give it a, a good wipe around the edge here. And really one of the most important things, and the same as the filter, make sure that this rubber seal is completely clear of any blockages, uh, any dirt or debris, and just make sure that that's nice and clean. So again, only takes a minute to do it. 
uh, I suppose what you can do is this this is quite a quick thing to do to, to clean and maintain it uh, but I think really what we need to do now is I'm going to clear all this rubbish away and then start to put the vacuum back together so to start off with let's put the fluffy head back together now you'll notice that uh, since I've washed this then it's almost got the fluffiness back into it uh, now I know it sounds a bit silly but uh, beforehand when I'd uh, before I cleaned it it had got a little bit flat uh, but now I've washed it and almost brought it back to life then just get that part and that just slots onto the side there you just want to locate it don't force it on because there's only one certain position it goes onto and then once you've located that then that just clicks back in, into place uh, so now that part is all done as far as the main body of the vacuum cleaner then the bin itself so you'll notice it's nice and shiny again almost as new so that just clicks back on uh, you'll see around there that you've got the uh, the rubber seal around there and as I mentioned just we've made sure that that's that's nice and clean and the last thing we need to do is just to pop the filter back on uh, all you need to do is just locate that on there twist it and then just make sure that's fully back in the original position uh, it, I mean cleaning the filter is actually an easy thing to do uh, if you do get uh, say the pulsing that's quite a common thing with Dyson vacuums then the really the first thing I suppose is to check to make sure there's any blockages within the main body of the vacuum uh, but I suppose the second thing is just to make sure that the uh, filter is nice and clean uh, that's something I'd recommend doing I suppose quite often probably once a month once every couple of months really depending on how dirty the home is that you're vacuuming uh, you can find sometimes uh, especially if where you're vacuuming is in quite a, a dusty or dirty area then you could find that cleaning the filter is needed more often so i hope you enjoyed this quick video on how to clean and maintain the dyson micro 1.5 kilogram cordless vacuum cleaner please give us a thumbs up click subscribe on my youtube channel uh, i'd always ask for comments whether it's good or bad about the video uh, if you think there's any things i missed then just pop it in the comments uh, if this has really helped you so if you find that you've got a blockage in it or you weren't quite sure how to clean it and if it's really helped you then just let me know because do always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.